Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to put a forward a question to you. The key part here is not visible. The question tag is why do we matter? This is a very open-ended question and it has served as a puzzle for centuries. Now when I say why do we matter, the biggest question here is who is we? We here refers to me and you, him and her, they and them. I'm talking about the 1.8 billion people on this earth who are aged between 10 to 24, 24 years of age. I'm talking about the youth population of this world. The workforce which has emerged as one of the most powerful workforce expressing their ideas and opinion at each point of time about each particular issue. I'm talking about those particular population that is we, the youth. Before I go on, I really want to make a confession that I've never told anyone before. In my first 18 years of life, I never took a single risk with my life, like never. I always tried to follow what others had done before or, or, or others were doing at that particular point of time. I kept myself very protected. I never did an unconventional thing because I lacked that risk-taking ability. My aspirations and my ambitions were never mine. They were a brainchild of others' aspirations. And that included my neighbor's son, probably my cousin brother, my classmates, and everyone around. So it's very easy to say that in my first 18 years of life, I never took a decision for myself. When I look back at those 18 years, I think I only lived those years partially. The key point here is that I try to analyze that what happened in those 18 years? Why didn't I take a decision for myself? And some of the key points that I came out with was that I didn't have that information or resources which prompted me to take a decision for myself. I never had those access to any type of information which needed for me to create that awareness for myself. The second key point that I came out with, that there was no possible platform of idea sharing. The only idea sharing which was happening was when I looked at others at what they were doing. And what this led to was, I got so much influenced by others in my first 18 years of life that I did exactly the same whether it includes choosing a particular team to support, or whether it includes a profession to choose, or whether it includes a career course to study. Yes, I am an engineer. Yes, I am. Getting influence was one of the biggest weakness that I shared in those 18 years. And I got influenced by probably anyone and everyone. What this led to was that it created a false 
and an over-exaggerated image about myself. I was completely living in a false and a utopian world in which my identity was very similar to the next person's identity. And I enjoyed that because I felt protected. Probably I was just one of them. The herd identity. And ladies and gentlemen, a very similar thing is probably shared by a lot of people in this world, which included me. Everyone wants to be like a sheep of this herd. And the best part is no one knows who is the leader of this herd, who started this herd. That is the best part. But we want to be like them. This ideology has become so much prominent that now it has become a culture, something that I, know, something that I call as an herd culture. As I progress in my life, I try to analyze what, what is the key part which was missing and what it led to, why this herd culture was so much prominent. And one particular thing that I really wanted was to find the missing link which was there, which I, I didn't get in my first 18 years. And after interacting with a lot of mentors, after inter interacting with a lot of youth across the globe, I came up with a link which I term as leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, leadership is a hat which everyone wants to wear. But there is no size which fits all. Leadership is very much subjective. It might mean something completely different to me as compared to you. It has a very subjective nature as such. A set of qualities which I can term as leadership qualities might not be your leadership qualities. Over the years, as the world has changed, so as the concept of leadership the very conventional idea of leading a team of people and terming that process as leadership has completely changed. Now we are encountering different situations, different moments. We term those as emotional leadership, social leadership. There are so many leadership which have come across, and one of the very key leadership which have come across is a personal leadership in which you try to lead yourself. You try to Identify what you are. You try to set goals for yourself and you chase those particular goals down. The personal leadership. Taking a cue from the leadership and talking about the youth, India has got the highest number of youth in the world. We have got a staggering figure of 356 million youth in this world. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, 356 million. This holds the key to the development of this country for the future, this 356 million youth. And this youth is different from what it was in the previous generation. This is the information age youth. We have access to probably every resource possible right now. And due to that, what has happened is it has led to a huge number of higher aspirations. Everyone wants good education, good health care, good jobs, good employment. They want everything which is of the best quality. But the problem lies with the reality. The reality is very far-fetched from our high aspirations. We do not have that many resources to complete the aspirations of each and every one in this country. So the area that we are looking forward to work in is probably the converging area between the aspirations and the reality, where they intersect. To work in that area, 
we need to make sure that we follow a structure in which we first gather the information. Based on that information, we identify the opportunities. We are doing that very well. The problem lies in the execution of those opportunity. We are not able to capitalize on the execution of opportunity due to which the results always remains questionable. Going further deep down in the execution process, the youth of the entire globe does not know which approach to adopt. There are two different approaches which can relate them with the government. One is either top to bottom or bottom to top. The youth are confused whether the government should come and help them or whether they should approach the government to seek assistance. And due to that, we always have the missing link between the government and the youth. Now to seal that link, it is very important for each one of us to make sure that we combine one particular trait with our aspirations, which is leadership. Youth leadership, ladies and gentlemen, youth leadership. When someone asks me to define youth leadership in very simple words, I just say them that it is about empowering youth to foster a positive change. It is very general, it is very generic, but it's up to you how to interpret this particular words. Giving you a very subtle example, I met this youth known as Keen Roberts in one of the conferences. Keen is from Serbia. Discussing about our country, India, Keen told me that he wants to visit India. Getting curious, I asked him that what are his travel plans. Keen says that he wants to come to India and wants to work with an organization that built toilets. And I was surprised. I asked Keen that what was the reason behind it. Now Keen told me, and he showed me a particular report, the IRC WASH report, that last year, 400 women in one of the Indian state were raped because of the absence of toilets. 400 women. And due to that particular reason, Please understand the connection here. There is a Serbian youth who wants to come to our country to build toilets. And I was amazed, like truly amazed, by the amount of information and awareness he possessed. And deep down, somewhere in my heart, I said, yes, this is what youth leadership is. This is where the information, the opportunity, the execution, and the results, they combine to empower youth. Ladies and gentlemen, this year is a very important year for us. The year of 2015. In the year 2000, we made something known as Millennium Development Goals. We set up eight different Millennium Development Goals. Later, in this year 2015, we are going to review those goals at United Nations Conference and we are going to set up a new set of goals which are termed as Sustainable Development Goals. Back in the year 2000, youth were not very active in the entire process. But this time, we need to make sure that we as youth are extremely active in raising our opinions and ideas and making sure that we become an integral part of drafting the Sustainable Development Goals. There are various platforms that are going to help us to design this post-2015 developmental agenda. Why these are very crucial is because these goals are going to be there for the next decade, probably the decade from which most of the youth is going to transition from youth to adults. And that is where the impact is supposed to be felt. If, you, if we do not act right now, we are going to encounter an exact situation which we are encountering right now. 
So it is extremely important to make sure that we create platform for ourselves in which we can express our ideas, in which we can generate our opinion, and in which we can empower others. The most important part of the entire process is to realize that the time is gone to find opportunities. It is the time for us to create them, to create for yourself, to create for others, and to create for the entire globe. Let us make sure that our decisions are heard. We become an integral part of each and every decision-making process. We hold a key role in making sure that whatever we say holds relevance. Because at the end, we do matter. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.